range, you impose the change of frequency as function of time. So like that, when you have the signal back to you, you will recognize exactly the time because you, uh, you look for the frequency. Okay. Then, this is what's so-called the fast time. And you will match this fast time with the exact inverse uh, chirp that you uh, produce for the, uh, uh, that you sent at first. You, uh, you know that. You know that. The flying bat. That man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he performs. You know, Batman is using Doppler to know the distance between objects. Okay. I think we, we were able to do this long time ago. Great story. I think this is... We still have a little bit of this in, uh, in our ear. We are able to, uh, to understand this Doppler because we listen to the Doppler and we know the speed at which something is coming to us. This, for sure, we are able to, uh, to synthesize the, uh, this motion from uh, the train, from uh, whoever is coming fast to you, especially if it's a big mammoth. Okay, so you run. Mm -hmm. So this was the, uh, this was probably. For the chirp, I'm not so sure we were able to uh, send this. <coughs> but, well, yeah. Okay, few animals are able to do. In any case, this is helping you to, uh, to achieve the, uh, the distance using this chirp. So, in fact, the, uh, we are using the same for the uh, instrument. Can I go back sometime? Times the distance, want to go, want to come back, divide by the speed of flight. So it's indeed, uh, you would need to have the delay, you will need to, uh, to, uh, to send pulses, to receive pulses, to be sure that you are in the good uh, chronology. So this could be uh, very expensive, or the clock should be uh, very good in order to, uh, to achieve the resolution. Uh, I don't say that we cannot do it, but it's, uh, it's just a matter of fact that it's uh, easier to, uh, and we, uh, as I explained, that to use a range <coughs> in the frequency. Uh, yes, here, it's just to give you a little bit of ID that the, uh, we have so-called uh, pulse repetition rate, which is the PRF of the instrument. That means the number of pulse you send per second that is uh, uh, for an instrument such as the SAR is, we are here. No, here. OK, so believe me. We send of the order of eight to ten thousand pulse per second, and uh, so this is why it uh, starts to be a mess. If you, if at the same time, since the antenna is at the same time transmitting and receiving, it's uh, difficult to know which is which. So that's why you need to fingerprint these pulses, and so these pulses will be sent with their own frequency. So like that, you can recognize that, oh, I sent this, uh, this pulse at that time because I can recognize this frequency. That's how you achieve the, uh, the resolution in, a, in, a, in range. And uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the delay that you, uh, that you expect. And, uh, and indeed, omega will change slightly or it depends if you uh, put it in the face here. And uh, so the range limitation for sure will be, uh, uh, will be achieved and limited and, uh, by this pulse width. And uh, so this is very important to, uh, to, uh, to consider. You, we were talking or someone was talking or will talk about scatterometry. Scatterometry is also a radar like the synthetic aperture radar, but it's a lazy radar. That means send 128 pulses per second. So we are talking about a factor 10 or more for or 100 for the star. So 
uh, a scatterometer which is used mostly to uh, analyze the uh, overall roughness of the uh, of the uh, surface for land or for ocean or for ice mostly for for ocean to obtain the uh, wind uh, the surface wind vector this will not achieve at all uh, fine resolution both in range and both in uh, azimuth it's not uh, it's not a SAR it's made to uh, to be very robust to have very good quality of the signal so they, they consider long pulses and uh, and uh, they, they don't uh, uh, they don't repeat these uh, pulses many times and for typically for a scatterometer the resolution will be of the order of this four kilometer at first but in fact, since you want to improve the radiometric uh, quality of your instrument to uh, obtain a precise wind, then you, uh, you, uh, you will consider 12 to 25 kilometer resolution for a scatterometer. Okay, so this is clear. Scatterometer is also a radar. I'm talking about a radar, but the scatterometer is 25 kilometer resolution at the end while we are talking with a synthetic aperture radar to achieve meter, 10 meter resolution, okay? Okay, so this was not easy. So where are we? You just... Okay. Okay, whatever, so you had everything, it will be posted on the web. Nobody uh, can say that. He doesn't know, we send a ramp. This is Omega, all the demonstration, beautiful. Okay, so this was unfocused, we focused, focused, and as we, uh, we expressed, the uh, focus can, again, it takes the time, in fact, it's to take the time to achieve the full resolution that is at first obtained. Here, it takes some time to uh, to, uh, to uh, recover exactly this uh, distance. This, as we see, where it is? Ah! You see, you didn't believe it. As the uh, frequency is proportional to the velocity and to the, in fact, the, uh, uh, to, uh, to this velocity, velocity will disappear from the time it takes to, uh, to sweep over and that's why at the end everything is cancelling out except that the fine resolution is proportional to the, uh, uh, the uh, length of the antenna divided by 2. So this is like that that you achieve. Okay. Processing in azimuth, I repeat, is just like a compression. We send the pulse, we repeat and uh, we will uh, follow uh, exactly the phase and we send a signal which looks exactly like this signal in fact we send exactly this signal to, uh, to make the, uh, uh, everything flat in sinus and cosine so like that you, uh, you have the full resolution achieved and uh, this is a mathematical uh, uh, way to uh, Consider it could be through correlation with match filter or directly in the Fourier domain with this uh, 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 this inverse uh, short filter. So this is how to illustrate the process. This is uh, the uh, input signal with the phase varying as function of uh, of time and. Uh, after what we call compression, we achieve exactly the resolution we want, and uh, and uh, to uh, and this is the best resolution. But obviously, for instance, if you don't want to uh, to listen for the time it takes to cross completely the the uh, the uh, the uh, natural resolution of the instrument, then you will not get this resolution. This is the maximum resolution you could get. But in fact, since uh, we are talking about 5 meters, 
and uh, the, the instrument is full of noise. Sometimes it's not necessary to achieve 5 meters, so we will use maybe only partial uh, time integration and we will be of the order of 20 meters. So this is the maximum that you can achieve, but we can play with the window and uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to obtain the resolution we want. Okay. So this is to uh, summarize a little bit uh, the, uh, this uh, along track resolution. You have a change of frequency, you have the strength of your receive signal that corresponds to uh, the uh, illumination along time, azimuth time, and this is a SAR processor. So if one day you want to, uh, to do a little bit of technique, or if you want to change, or if you want to get uh, to, uh, to have uh, some uh, new technology to uh, achieve better resolution, and uh, it must be said that there, there is still a lot of, uh, of science behind all this uh, technical issue. In fact, you take the raw data, then you, uh, you, you send the inverse chirp, and this is called the first compression. Then, from this, uh, uh, you do the inverse uh, Fourier transfer form, and you perform the same in the azimuth. And this is, the, this is giving you the azimuth compression. You, uh, you do the inverse of this, and you obtain the image you want. And uh, very simple, and uh, now with FFT and uh, you, you have, this processor can run on any uh, machine. And uh, this is to give you the, uh, this is a phase type of, uh, for Dirac, you can imagine that you will, uh, so as function of range and azimuth, first you do the range compression that makes the, uh, everything to go along this line, and after that you achieve azimuth compression and you obtain this bright point. Normally it should be a Dirac, but it's never perfect. In fact, you, are, you, you, uh, you must use different type of window and, and so on to smooth, but it's uh, already a very high resolution that you can achieve with this technique. And uh, this is famous example that I try to give for people when they start to think, okay, it's crazy, today it's not good. So this is kind of a standard SAR image you will get at first. You don't see anything. So this is raw data that you will, uh, you will uh, obtain from <coughs> your instrument. So this is kind of, uh, of data that you, uh, you are supposed to observe. So this is not really a nice image. Then, after that, you do the azim. Yes, you can perform in range or in azimuth. You do the azimuth processing. And you start to see something. You don't. It's not clear, but okay. It starts to be okay. Me, I see what it is. And after that, when you achieve the range, this is to obtain the image. So, so this is so. So, with range, not bad. But it's, I like it. Yeah. I, I find it stupid, but I like it. So whatever. So you see that, in fact, <laughs> I don't know. It's quite stupid, but whatever. Don't don't say that uh, I, I do this. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I shouldn't make a beautiful man. I know, but it's a beautiful woman anyway. Uh, so you start from this, and you achieve. This. So, oh. yes, oh. Yeah, so that's when you run after. So, so this is to just to say that without any uh, processing, you will not be able to see anything from uh, an instrument. Okay. And uh, you can uh, do it. So, this is less uh, glamour, but uh, this is in fact uh, uh, from the book of Robinson, I guess. We are trying to describe exactly. I think Robinson. I've been talking with him many times. Never understood the sound. So I think uh, I would. Uh, I think 
would be better for him to come back and to, uh, to meet and drink in it. Then he will understand. <laughs> but in any case, this, uh, the ID is very, uh, is, very, uh, is, uh, is very simple. You have to, uh, uh, each time you expect the signal to have a modulation in frequency, either because you impose this uh, modulation by sending the pulse with a given uh, modulation or imposed by the, uh, by the geometry and the phase history of your signal, you try to match exactly this by compensating with the, uh, in, uh, in the uh, processing. So if you send chirp, you should go back and send the D chirp. We know that for the, uh, for the uh, azimuth, it will be obviously a chirp because we see that the to a first order the uh, phase is quadratic, meaning that the uh, uh, the uh, Doppler uh, that the Doppler frequency is linearly uh, evolving. Could be beyond because you have acceleration and so on, and uh, this is only the first order, and you can even listen longer to the, the Doppler to achieve final resolution if you make a, a, a next order uh, chirp analysis. So this is basically what happened. So you have the raw data where you have the individual pulses that you can make as function of time or range. Then you, uh, you do well your compression in, a, in, a, in range and you uh, finish with your compression in, a, in a azimuth, so like that you, uh, you achieve the full uh, uh, resolution. And now we stop for five minutes. To, uh, and if you have any questions, really uh, don't hesitate. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I could understand that this is not really uh, appealing because it's, uh, it's very technical, uh, but, and I repeat and repeat, the uh, native resolution of the instrument is of the order of few kilometers. Uh, the instrument is sweeping, is going at 7 kilometers per second, meaning that it takes of the order of 1 second, or less than 1 second, to sweep over what the uh, instrument is able to see. The, uh, the fact that you take this long time, this slow time, because compared to the speed of light, it's a very slow time, uh, uh, helps us to follow the phase and to achieve a match filter in order to uh, uh, send a replicate or replicate this phase history in the signal in order to, uh, to achieve the fine resolution. Uh, in any case, one very interesting uh, uh, potential is for the ocean application is to be able to, uh, to derive very fine resolution and to achieve enough uh, resolution to observe waves. And uh, this is from uh, uh, my old days when we tried to uh, to, uh, and I will repeat, and you know this, but repeat again, uh, where we are trying to, uh, to derive some information from the, uh, the ocean waves as uh, the instrument nominally is able to, uh, to uh, resolve uh, the waves. That means that the resolution of the instrument is of the order of 5 meters and uh, in azimuth and uh, 16 meter to 20 meter in range. So 20 meter in range, 4 meter in azimuth, you expect to be able to see the wave modulation as it was explained probably by Vladimir last time. But this is one example where in fact, and this is not clear, but it's okay, where we are using, where we, we found that it was enough for us to not go at the full resolution 
and that's what I was trying to explain to uh, to uh, Igor. Is that here I was talking to uh, to uh, to the fact that if I'm able to sweep the entire scene, then only if I sweep the entire scene, I can achieve the uh, finest resolution. If I decide to take only half, I will have a degraded resolution, two times less, or of the order of two times. Uh, but it will be equivalent to consider the first part of the time history of the ocean, and then the second part of the uh, time history from the ocean. <coughs> Meaning that from one scene, I can decompose in many scenes. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. With lower resolution. Okay, with lower resolution, but still high resolution. And this is one example where, in fact, we perform the, uh, the analysis by dividing by two the, uh, the, Doppler the Doppler history information. So we cut the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Doppler in two sides, meaning that we consider the first 0.3 second and the second and the second image comes from 0.3 to 0.6 seconds, for instance, of integration, and I have two images. And now, usually when you, uh, you perform uh, data analysis and that you are interested by ocean wave, you perform a spectral analysis by Fourier transform. So this is an example where you have, since it's an image, Normally, you have absolutely no way to understand the, the direction, uh, the, uh, the propagation. You know the direction, but you don't have the propagation if it's, a, if it's an image. But since we had two images, and the fact that the waves, even if the, uh, the, uh, the time separation between these two images was only of the order of 0.3 seconds, we were able to see the wave to move. And here, in the imaginary part, we are able to, uh, to uh, consider that the waves are going in one direction rather than the other one. That means that we are able to, uh, to uh, resolve the ambiguity of propagation with this principle. So, meaning that the SAR can also be used to follow patterns. Obviously, military are using it to uh, follow where the uh, tanks are going, where the train is going, where the uh, plane is going, and so on. So that's why the, uh, the SAR is using first. But for ocean, the motion of the, uh, of the, uh, of the wave can be captured by this uh, technique. Um, Okay, so I will not repeat the, the way it's done, but believe me, you just uh, uh, divide your initial time or slow time in azimuth into two. And this was a decisive breakthrough and was found by, uh, well, not found, but was in fact anticipated by Canadians and uh, made, uh, uh, in fact, uh, then by uh, Geir Engen. He was, uh, he was a, a student of mine in, uh, in uh, 1903, and uh, he published uh, this work because I was thinking that it was so stupid that we would not need to, uh, to publish this, you know, just doing cross-correlation, but it became very famous. So, but it's a real breakthrough. It, it was made the idea, the anticipation was, was made by a genius in Orfield, uh, still alive, uh, Keith Rainey, a Canadian person who <coughs> defined many, many new instruments such as the uh, 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 interferometry, SAR, altimetry, many things. And he said, okay, it's uh, enough to perform uh, cross-correlation to uh, obtain the, uh, the uh, 
propagation of waves. But this was demonstrated by Gerengen and, uh, and Harald Jonsen from uh, Norway. And, uh, but for us, the most important is was that even, that's interesting, even if the, uh, the time is very short, you are able to, by performing this intercorrelation between these two loops, you are able to achieve two things. One, to be able to find the propagation and uh, by following the imaginary part, but most important, to kill most of the noise of the instrument. Indeed, speckled noise or random noise in, uh, in SAR is completely decorrelated in time. And uh, so when you perform the correlation between two loops, even if they are closely, uh, if they are close in, in time, since they are absolutely uncorrelated, this will disappear. And indeed, okay, it's not that clear, but uh, uh, direct uncorrelated noise removal. Here you see a pedestal, here, a noise that after applying the, uh, the technique is completely removed. This helps to better resolve the, uh, the waves. And, uh, and this has been a real breakthrough that is still now used in the new type of instrument. And uh, this is just uh, for, again, just to explain that we, uh, we, uh, we start from the philosophy then that uh, uh, we refined at that time compared to uh, other techniques was to, uh, to uh, be able to, uh, to use this, uh, uh, to better understand the SAR, helped us to uh, anticipate that we could use different uh, look uh, to, uh, to achieve cross-spectral estimation, then you had the clutter, then we were able, since we have better signal, we normally have better wind speed retrieval because the, the cross-section is cleaner. While the scene is small, less than uh, 10 km by 10 km, the quality of the wind speed could be as good as what the uh, uh, scatterometer can uh, perform. And this is thanks to uh, the fact that we can remove efficiently uh, the, uh, the, the noise. Then after that, we perform the ocean wave spectral retrieval algorithm based on different lookup table and function and so on. This is still a matter of debate. And then this will be to generate a geophysical product. Must be said that the SAR today is mostly, uh, has been and is still mostly an image uh, uh, um, uh, in cross section in unit of cross-section. Very little has been made to derive a level 2 product. There are few attempts to, uh, to, uh, to try to interpret directly the, uh, the cross-section in terms of wind or the cross-section in terms of uh, ice uh, age and so on, or ice type classification. But this is not operational. And the only operational uh, algorithm that has been uh, uh, achieved for, for SAR is this one that we defined uh, 15 years ago and uh, that is still uh, ongoing and uh, will be implemented in the next generation of SAR with a better. This was for the 20 years of uh, anniversary of, uh, of ERS but it's still the same philosophy uh, for the next generation. Okay, so this is, for instance, what you can observe when you go at finer resolution. Uh, this is an example of uh, Cosmo SkyMed type of uh, SAR. The resolution is 2 meters. So you see very, very well the modulation of the, uh, of the scatter by the long wave. Uh, the most important uh, modulation is a local tilt. So when the instrument is facing, when, when the uh, waves are starting to face the instrument, the uh, cross section is brighter. When the waves, you are going down the, uh, the uh, um, uh, after the crest in the, toward the trough, 
you are the, this time the uh, the tilt is not toward the instrument but away, and then this is why you obtain a uh, darker uh, contrast. So this is this type of information you get with Cosmos SkyMed. It's the finest instrument so far that is flying. Smallest antenna. Okay using X-Men and it's uh, Italian and for military and uh, civil purpose. This is kind of uh, spectral analysis where we obtain directionality thanks to this technique to, uh, to take real and imaginary part. Okay, and uh, once you have uh, this uh, and uh, uh, you can, this was a small, we extract only a small bit, uh, a tile of this bigger image and uh, the uh, spectral analysis can be performed locally and uh, here you can see the change of the waves as they uh, propagate along the, uh, uh, toward the coast. I'm, I'm leaving here. So this is the island in front of Brest and uh, where you have a big tide, big waves and uh, so you have uh, some uh, sheltering effect you have some refraction effect that you, you see going towards the, uh, the, um, uh, the coast of the island and uh, so some turning, you can uh, look at the wave current interaction and so on and uh, this, and even you have reverse uh, effect uh, behind the island and this can be achieved thanks to the fine resolution and as well as the big image. So this is the main advantage of the SAR. That means that at the end you still, uh, uh, for the ocean, you can uh, perform analysis of the order of few hundred meters with very, very, very high accuracy. Okay, and I will repeat what we did for the uh, uh, EIS and uh, that we were able to, uh, to uh, use the different observation from, uh, from the, uh, the different paths and uh, we made the first before we, uh, we were able to, uh, to do it uh, correctly with uh, Fabrice Collard. We were already trying to map everything and uh, Fabrice developed this famous firework that uh, has been uh, done using the SAR. So, and this is only propagating the wave. Since we are able to resolve the, the, uh, the wavelength, we know the phase speed of the, uh, of the wave. And since we are able to, uh, to resolve the direction, we are able to, uh, to, um, to achieve in which direction they are going. And uh, this is some improvements are, are made for the next uh, uh, SAR, and, but will still follow the same principle. And uh, this has been used many times to illustrate the uh, potential to monitor very long waves and uh, to uh, follow this very long wave for many, many, many days. And uh, this is uh, some example of crossing swell that occur in the uh, in the Pacific with a longer wave of the order of 500 meters, which is very long, more than 22 second period, and that uh, are generated in the north and going to Peru. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, the way to monitor and to follow the, the wave. Okay, but everything is not pink. I don't know if, you have this, if we have this expression in English. No? Everything is not bright, future, no? Okay, whatever. There is something that is very bad. And uh, the fact that, but I will, I will not try to explain it into uh, too much detail. But suppose that the, uh, we are following the phase of the, uh, of the, uh, of the scatter and we were stupidly thinking, not stupidly, but we were thinking that the, uh, 
the ocean was not moving. So that's not true, that's first thing. We saw that there is a motion due to the long wave, at first thing, but this is coherent. In fact, it's not very, uh, it varies slowly. So even if we make a mistake by making, by thinking that the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, motion is not important, it's not a big deal. It's coherent. But something that doesn't work well is when we have very short-lived extremes such as breaking event. In this case, the, uh, as it has been probably discussed by, uh, by Vladimir, the, uh, the breaking wave can be very bright. So, but it's a very transient, it cannot last forever. You know, the fact that you have the breaking wave is, and that you develop non-linearities and then that you have uh, bright points, this doesn't last for many times. So what happens is that not only usually breaking will happen with very fast speed, but they will also disappear very rapidly. Okay? Is, okay. So what happens is that I won't make the demonstration, but uh, if you want, I can. Is that when you detect one event and uh, you see the geometry, it's like that, okay? When you detect one event, this event will be smeared because it doesn't know where to put the event. So in fact, you understand that all the demonstration that was made was only if the uh, target was still. If the, st if the target start to, uh, to, uh, to move, then you know this is stroboscopic principle. You will have the, uh, the uh, change due to the own Doppler of the target to make the target somewhere else. Okay, suppose that you have a fast boat, then you will see from a SAR image that the boat, the ship, is not uh, linked to its uh, uh, wake. So the wake doesn't move too fast, but the ship is going fast. If, it's, if the ship is going in the direction of the radar or away of the radar but with a, uh, almost the same angle, then you will see exact, you will see a change in azimut, and you will have the uh, the ship to be away from the wake. It's it's fun. So this is fun. That's when you have uh, uh, some pollution. Most of the time, the the uh, the, the ship where you uh, with the pollution behind will not be at the same azimut. And this is due to the own Doppler of the ship. Okay? You add a new Doppler. Since I make all my uh, history and I have a new Doppler, I have a new, uh, I have a new position. This is deterministic Doppler. When this is like that, this starts to be random Doppler. It comes, it, it goes, there, there are uh, breaking because due to the, uh, the wave and, and uh, we know that most of the breaking occur here for sure but after that it will leave some, some, some smearing and this is even worse on the uh, above so meaning that you cannot believe exactly what the SAR is giving to you and this has been and uh, this can be also seen here in fact, immediately, if you look at this image, it looks really like there is too much correlation in, in, uh, in this direction. In the azimuth, it's smear. It's like smear. You know, you put your lipstick everywhere. Okay? And this makes uh, the fact that in the spectral domain, in fact, you cannot achieve the fine resolution 
because of this random smearing due to the motion of scatter that are bright, fast, and that make the, uh, the exact resolution to be also random. Meaning that over the ocean, it's too bad that the sound doesn't work as it should. And the best resolution you can achieve from the SAR is not 4 meters, is not 5 meters, it depends on the wind speed, it depends on the, on, the, on the motion and the number of breakers and so on. So that's why I'm still paid. Okay. Because it's so complex that in order to, uh, to, uh, to understand this and to make still some product that can be used, you have to correct for all this effect. And this has been uh, a big, big uh, uh, difficulties over the last 20 years. So, to go back and to uh, understand, when you, if you have by any chance some bright feature like that, be careful, they are not, at, they are not exactly where they occur, so if you want to be precise, and they are especially large compared to the real life in Azimuth. Okay? That's clear?